Hey, what's up guys and welcome to this video. This video is all about Wi-Fi extensions. Now, it's the most common misconception that I hear when people say, the Wi-Fi in my home is rubbish, I'm gonna go and buy a booster, as they say, or a Wi-Fi extender. But this isn't always the answer, and to be honest, more times than not, simply buying a Wi-Fi extension without actually analyzing what your problem is, isn't going to help. So this video aims to help. It aims to tell you what Wi-Fi extenders are, how they work, and whether you should buy one. So then, what actually are Wi-Fi extenders? Well, as the name suggests, they extend your Wi-Fi. Now, they extend your Wi-Fi and then they create a new hotspot for you to connect to. So, for example, you might have a router upstairs and then you might have an extension downstairs. Your router will be known as upstairs and your downstairs extender will be known as downstairs. This way you have two different things to connect to. Happy days. Now this works in a number of ways. The first one and the most common way is your classic Wi-Fi extender that will then connect to your existing Wi-Fi router via Wi-Fi and then create its own signal for you to connect to. So if you're downstairs and you want to connect to the downstairs extension, you will connect to the downstairs extension, which in turn will connect to your router, which will then in turn connect to the internet. Now the other way is with Powerline, and if you don't know what Powerline is, you can find a pretty helpful video, if I say so myself, uh, just here that will explain all about Powerline and what its advantages and disadvantages are. Now, the advantage, the advantage here of using Powerline is that you're not relying on Wi-Fi to connect to Wi-Fi, so if your Wi-Fi downstairs is pretty rubbish, you can then create an extension from where Wi-Fi isn't very good, which in some ways makes a lot more sense but again, it will depend on the home and depend on whether you want to go with Powerline or not. Now, when you're shopping for a Wi-Fi extender, it's quite important to bear in mind the specifications of the device you're buying. Now, this is mainly because it needs to sort of match the specifications of your Wi-Fi router. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't do that, you're still going to get it all working. But the reason you want to match them isn't for compatibility as, say, it's so that you can sort of get the most out of your router without having to pay for more than you need. Now, the thing you're looking out for is whether your router is a wireless N device or a wireless AC device. If it's a wireless N device, this isn't quite as good, nothing to worry about. It just means that there's not really any point going out and buying a AC extender because they're more expensive and you're not really going to be able to get the full benefit because your extender won't be able to connect to an AC network because there isn't one. But likewise, if you have a wireless AC router and then you only buy a wireless N extender, then you're not going to be able to get the full performance out of your device. This doesn't really matter, apart from the fact that you're losing a lot of performance that you really don't have to lose. So do a little bit of research and buy the right one. Now in my home, I have an AC router and BT were kind enough to send out for this uh, AC extender. So we're able to look at AC and see whether it's actually worth buying. And the speeds that I managed to get with it were pretty damn good. They are pretty close to matching what I would get upstairs with your native router. So this was great and it shows that having an AC device will actually uh, help if you have an AC router in your home. But all Wi-Fi extensions are gonna be fairly similar in the way that you set them up. If they have a WPS, Wi-Fi protected setup button on them, then simply press this button and press the button on your existing Wi-Fi router, and then they will kind of talk to each other, exchange some keys, and Bob's your uncle, you then have a Wi-Fi extension that you can then set up and start to use. If you want to configure it yourself and do things like changing the passwords to something different, because depending on the extension you have, it might actually use the existing passwords that you have in your router upstairs, which or downstairs or wherever it is, which is good. Uh, but if you do want to change this, then you can either connect to it wirelessly and then uh, configure it, or you can connect with an ethernet cable and then configure it. But obviously, if your Wi-Fi extension doesn't have an Ethernet cable, then you only be able to do this wirelessly. Not really going to be a big deal for anyone. So that is essentially what a Wi-Fi extension is. It's a device that enables you to get additional range in your home. But here's the thing. It's quite often not the problem of range uh, if you're having problems with Internet in your home. If you're going to spend a load of money on wireless kit and you haven't done so before, I would always recommend going out and buying a really nice, decent wireless router first. 
unless you have a certain scenario that would demand a range extender. An example of a home that would probably want a range extender would be if you had quite a long home, so especially if you're in um, a terraced house because they're always quite long. Um, if your Wi-Fi router is here and your home goes all the way on to here, then obviously the signal is going all the way around here and you're not actually going to be able to uh, get it to the other side of your home. So that's when a Wi-Fi extension comes in handy or if you want to extend it out in the garden or you have thick walls that's probably going to be when having a range extender looks like a good idea. But if you have a fairly average house or you think you have a fairly average house then you're probably going to get better performance out of buying a better router because don't forget that a Wi-Fi extender will rely on the router you already have so if you've got something like a fairly old hub that came with your broadband five years ago, it's probably worth upgrading that. And then if you need a range extender, go out and get one. Because it's about the performance of the device, not just the range. And by extending the range, then you are effectively just extending the range of your device that might be pants. So do a little bit of research and then hopefully you can come to the conclusion of a wireless device that will properly help your network. Another good tip is if you download an app called Wi-Fi Analyzer, I believe that's what it's called on Android anyway, but there are loads of similar ones, then you can actually look at your Wi-Fi in your home and everyone else's Wi-Fi and it'll tell you what channel they're on. And this is quite important because if you've got loads of Wi-Fi networks all on the same channel, because most of them are normally set to automatic, then you might find that you're getting a lot of interference and your performance isn't as good as it could be. So this is the situation where you'll want to log into your router, change the channel manually to something with a lot less interference, and then you might find your range and your performance then increases without you having to spend any money at all. But anyway, this has been Wi-Fi Extenders. I hope it's been very useful. Uh, if it has, then please give it a like. If it hasn't, then obviously give it a dislike. And subscribe for more videos like this and others on PCs, gaming, and technology. If you have any questions, then either leave a comment below or, as always, hit me up at PCCentric on Twitter because that is the best place to contact me because uh, I can very quickly send you a reply. So, thank you so much for checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one.